Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a warm, helpful vermicompost community, you are in the right place. Today is something that every worm herder is thinking about. Are my worms healthy? Happy? You know, are they doing good? Am I being a good worm mama or dad? Please put your questions about your worm buddies in the comments below. So what we're looking in on today is the ENC in the 27 gallon half barrel using the wedge system. I hope to get a harvest today and then give them a good boost of bedding and food while we talk about it. It's almost April now and the furnace has finally stopped going off all the time, which means the moisture is gonna become more stable in the bin and the temperatures are going to be out on the rise. Let's uh, turn you around here and we'll look at the completed end of the bin. Now, like I had told you before, I have actually been using the top of this bin in order to um, put my seedlings under the nice lights that are above here. But one of the problems with that is that it makes it super moist and then the worms don't leave the area. So that is a little bit of a problem for me because I did want to get a good harvest. But let me get a little container here and we will start picking out some of the castings, even if it's not a whole bunch. And if I get to the point where there's too many worms, then I'll have to quit. But I am hoping to get a couple of gallons of castings out of here to make room for the new bedding and the new food that's gonna give them a boost. Okay, well this far end's not doing too bad. I'm getting quite a bit. I think this is a one gallon container. It's like one of those shoe box things. So I think, I think it's gonna be okay. I think I'm gonna get enough. Yeah, there's not too many worms at the end here. Just a couple and I'll pick those out when I'm sifting. So one of the first things that I wanted to talk to you about is worm health. And one of the ways you can tell, are your worms healthy or maybe are they a little bit unhealthy? Okay, so as soon as we get to a worm here, then we can start having that talk. Okay, so the first thing about the, are the worms healthy? And I'll do this as I'm moving things over, is kind of a, a speed thing. So as I'm breaking this up, I'm looking at these worms and I'm saying, are they kind of speedy? He's wiggling pretty good there, isn't he? Now, if you have a worm that is literally just kind of laying there, he might not be okay, or they might not be okay, because they are both genders. So if you have worms that are zipping along pretty good, then you probably, your worms are probably okay. But if they are kind of laying there very lifeless, you might have one of a couple of different problems. And in my basement, it's pretty common to see worms be kind of sluggish deep in winter because of the temperature. They've kind of gone a little bit dormant and that's to be expected and that's nothing to worry about. You of course just don't feed them as much when they are being slow and sluggish as you would when they're being all nice and zippy like this little guy here. So I'm gonna fluff this up and get them some oxygen in here because we're gonna try and let this dry out and hopefully they will move to the other end of the bin very soon. This is pretty damp and uh, that's because I had a tray sitting on top of it. It didn't have a chance to uh, get any drier. All right, let me move you back a little bit. Okay, so you see these guys they're all pretty wiggly. You see all those little tails wiggling around. That is a good indication that these worms are nice and healthy. So you see that these little guys are all wiggling around with their tails, and that means they're nice and healthy. I'm gonna get these guys piled up here. There we go. And I try and be as gentle as I can, but this is actually very heavy because it is pretty damp, that kind of increases the weight. Usually when I'm doing this in blue, the far end is pretty dry, but since this is 
half the length of blue, it is uh, actually still pretty wet and also, but it's pretty sticky. So I think these will be ready to roll the next time. All right, one of the next things I'm gonna to talk to you about that you might not know if your worm is healthy or not is the color. So one of the things about that, now these are European night crawlers, so it might not be the best example, but if your entire worm is this color, like the tail, it might not be healthy. Um, European night crawlers naturally have a vanilla tail, but if the whole worm was that color, I would be concerned about them. And normally if you see worms that are a very, very pale color, or if you're looking at like, regular paper or cardboard, if they're very pale like that, then they might not be very healthy. And one of the things that might cause that is dehydration or lack of food. So if you go and see worms that are very pale, they're probably also going to be sluggish, then they might need a little boost of moisture to poof them up a little bit. You'll see worms actually shrinking and getting very skinny. Now, this, this is about normal for my worm here. These are little uh, immature European night crawlers. And so if it was half this width, it might not be a healthy worm. So if you were, want to try and help them out a little bit, you can add some moisture until it is about this moist, and also increase your bedding so that there's something to sop up that moisture, you know, for later for when the worms need it. And then also if you have worms that are super pale and the moisture is okay, there might not be enough nutrition in there for them to eat. All right, let me flip you around. We can look at the other side. So a lot of times when you hear me talk about fast food and slow food, this could be part of the deal. So if you have nothing but super long-term food, which could be bedding, it could be, you know, something that's got like a, that is a nut or something that takes a super long time to eat, like an apple. The worms won't be able to get that and make it immediately available to consume. So one of the things that you can do if you want to help your worms get their food faster into their system is to puree them some food to make it more available to them so that they can fit it in their tiny little mouths or so the bacteria can eat it and then they can eat the bacteria. That's one of the things that you can do if you see your worms are super pale and skinny. Make sure you have that moisture and also make sure that they have food that is readily available right now. All right, so here we are. We're at the business end of the bin. I'm gonna pull this dry bedding out because I'm gonna put that on the bottom when I feed them. All right, here we are, we're getting to the, this is probably two feedings ago. You can still see the bedding is in progress. Not finding any food yet, but you can see that the bedding has not been consumed. So another thing that people talk about when they're new worm farmers is that, how come I don't see any cocoons? Why don't, are they not breeding? Are they not healthy enough to breed? What is going on here? And I can say that I have also experienced this too. Um, I was always so jealous of the other worm farmers on YouTube. They'd be like, oh, look, here's a cocoon. There's one, there's one, there's one. Everybody gets a cocoon, right? And I'm like, I don't see any, what is going on? Are my worms unhappy? Um, do they not like each other? Why are they not breeding? And one of the reasons is that I was being impatient. Shocker. And basically, there had not been enough time for the worms to meet each other and then have their cocoons. And also, when you have a brand new bin, the, the density of the cocoons, they're really kind of hard to see. You know, when you have little worms, little worms make little cocoons, and you don't ever see them. But once you get about six months in, then you start seeing these worm balls. And when you see a bunch of worm balls, the chances of finding a cocoon, like right there, gets very much higher. So if the population density in your worm bin is not a lot, 
then you might not be able to find any cocoons. So if you're you're looking for a needle in a haystack, if you if you don't have a whole bunch of worms or if they've really only been in the system for a very short amount of time. So there's probably five or eight pounds of worms in this 27 and a half gallon bin. So there is a high population of worm density. So I know that there is enough worms that they will find somebody to hang out with and make cocoons. But if you've got a bin this size and you only have a pound of worms, it's going to take a while for them to bump into each other, if you know what I mean. So, you know, patience. Unfortunately, I preach a lot of patience. I do, I know, and I am one of the least patient people. But, you know, if you want the, you know, cold hard facts of the reasons for why you're not seeing any cocoons, it's probably just lack of patience. But these worms are all together. Now, on the other side, if you have a really, really established bin that's years and years and years old. All right, let me move you up. If you have a bin that is very old, years and years, and the population is just stable, worms are self-limiting. So if there is not enough uh, food and bedding and locations to make baby worms, like this little guy here, look at that cute little baby. Good worm! So if you have a bin of a certain size, doesn't matter what it is, eventually it will come to its carrying capacity and there won't be any more room for baby worms. So the adults will quite simply slow down their breeding and they will just not make more baby worms until the population is ready to cycle. The worms live for a couple of years, depending on the breed of the worm and, and how healthy they are. You know, they might live from what I understand, I have no experience because I don't just keep a worm around and check out how old it is. But according to the books, worms can live from anywhere from two years to five years, depending on the breed and the conditions that they're in. So if you have a old bin and you don't ever see any babies or cocoons, you could be at the carrying capacity. And it's about time you shared those worms with one of your friends so that your worms will have a reason to breed and make you some cute little baby worms and cocoons. If you're interested in seeing a video about the worms hatching from a cocoon or even looking at them through a microscope to see their little baby hearts, I will link a video right at the end of this one that you can go to and watch them. They have five a aortic arches is what they're called. They're not technically hearts, but they do beat just like a heart and I think they're adorable. Um, there's the long version and the short version. So I will connect the that for you so you can choose if you want to watch a couple minutes of adorableness or I think there's a 15 minute video of all the adorableness. You choose. All right, now we've made a good space here. I can put all that dry stuff in the bottom. That will soak up all the moisture from what is going to be a very wet feeding today. You know what? And they might as well just eat the script. I'm done with it. And they can eat the, last, the script from last time too. And they will. Eat my words. Well, the worms will eat my words. Okay, on to the food. Now this is a blended feeding. This is rice and green peppers and eggshells. Looks kind of gross, but you can see the eggshell flex in there. And that is a very liquidy feeding. They will be staying over here in this part here, probably for another week or so until the bacteria gets in here and, and molds and whatever. Which brings me to the next part of are your worms healthy? Now, if you feed a lot of food, and I think I, I've not known people who have been experienced worm farmers that have been doing this for 5, 10, 15, or plus years. I've never really heard them say they've had protein poisoning. It's normally new people. And one of the things, like I did just now, is I put some very, very soupy food, lots of carbohydrates that are going to mold and possibly ferment. But what I did in order to make that not terrible is they have two feet of space behind this feeding where they can hang out. They have lots of other little bits and pieces and crumbs they can continue to eat without putting themselves in danger. But if this was the only food left in the bin and they tried to eat it, it would actually ferment in their gut and in their body, causing them to look like little beads. 
at which point then there is no curing them. They they will die. You can't pull them out and, and do anything and help them. Unfortunately, it is a done deal once you see them looking like little beads. Uh, unfortunately, that's it for them. But what you can do in the event that you see worms that look like that, what you could do... So let's say that I saw one in a week. I could pull out this feeding and replace it with just bedding and leave it and basically let the worms go back to foraging for a while. So if you find out that the food you're feeding is causing the protein poisoning, pull it out. Pull it out, replace it with bedding, walk away for a couple of weeks, make sure the moisture's fine. Um, a lot of times that will sort itself out. All the worms that are affected will be reabsorbed into the ecosystem. And then you can go back and learn from your lesson, whatever you fed them that caused that, basically don't do that again. Um, pureed food is probably one of the things that is the most susceptible because it is physically able to be eaten by the worms and it's not decomposed by all of our little friends, including, oops, where'd you go, buddy? Inclu including the little isopod here that I'm trying to find. So those guys are able to shred things and help out the worms, but honestly, they the worms need their help. So if you do find out that you have protein poisoning, take that food out that's causing it. Don't throw it away. Just put it in your, you know, compost bin and let it go for a little bit. And then once it's started to degrade properly, then you can give it back to the worms. I think the biggest thing that I have done to prevent myself from having protein poisoning is bedding. Bedding, 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 bedding. Tons and tons of bedding. I'm actually giving them about four gallons of bedding right now. And that is giving them options. They can go in the bedding. They do not have to go in that food. It's not their only resort. So they're not starving. They don't need to go there. But when they do, that food will be absolutely ready because it was pureed. All right, guys. Well, if you like this video, I have a playlist on the European Nightcrawlers I can put right over there. And if you don't uh, want to look at that, YouTube has a video over here that they think you will like. Now, right smack dab in the middle up here, I am going to put that video of the baby worms being born so you can watch it. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.